Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another day for the Aquarium of the Pacific's Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Emily, and I'm joined in studio today with my friend James and my friend Dana. We're so excited to have you join us today. We've got a full day of programming, and we're about to get started on something a little bit new and on something a little bit different for our littles out there. So we want to welcome you to join us. Uh, anybody of any age is welcome to uh, view, of course, and we also take your questions live here. If you have questions, during our program at any point today, feel free to text us. The text number is right here. I'll have it appear. Uh, you can text your questions to 562-286-1838. Once again, 562-286-1838. Uh, typical charges apply for that. So for the littles who are watching and are working with a grown-up to text in, make sure you remember that as well. All right, so wonderful. Today, we are going to uh, have a look at all different kinds of things uh, around the aquarium, and that's because we are learning how to be scientists. So as scientists, we have to notice things a lot. So everybody, wake up your eyes and use your scientist vision right here to see if we can look and notice some things about the things we're about to look at. Now, when we notice these things, I use my eyes, and, and one of the most important things to do as scientists is we have to be able to count things. So that's really important information for us. So today, we are going to be counting all different kinds of things. We're going to start here with the very beginning. Let's uh, take a look at an image right here and see if uh, you can tell me, what do you notice? How many things do you see? right here. <gasps> Wait a second. There's only one sea turtle in this picture. You're right. So if you uh, shouted out the number one, you are correct. This is a sea turtle. Now we love sea turtles here at the aquarium. We happen to have a few of them that live here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you a fuzzy friend of mine though. Um, hold on. Okay, I'm ready to show you my fuzzy friend that's a sea turtle. It's a stuffed animal. Maybe you have a bunch of stuffed animals that you like at your house too. Here I have a stuffed animal. We changed the background just so you can see them a little bit better. Now, sea turtles are really, really interesting animals uh, because they have, they're reptiles uh, and they live in the ocean, but they have one, uh, two, actually two shells here, but one big curved shell on the top and they actually have a shell on the bottom. They also have one, two, three, four fins, and then they have one tail and a head right here. Now their shell is really, really beautiful and curved. And um, if we're, we were to look at a real life sea turtle, you could see that the shell actually has a bunch of different little plates on it. Did you notice that? I noticed that too. And actually that is how scientists are able to tell different sea turtles apart from one another, is we're able to cal count the different plates or scutes on a sea turtle. It's really interesting. That's a really important thing to be able to do as scientists. All right, so let's see if we can um, either take a look at a picture again of a sea turtle um, or actually take a look at one of our cameras here and uh, see what you notice here. Hmm. <gasps> Do you see that? Oh my goodness. Here comes something swimming around. Now I notice a shark, but I also notice in the very edge, one sea turtle swimming. This is a nice view of Shark Lagoon here, one of our exhibits here at the aquarium. And so I'm going to try and move out of the way a little bit and see if we can see our sea turtle. I hear that the sea turtle hopefully is going to swim back towards us here. That's one sea turtle we happen to have living here at Shark Lagoon. Now the sea turtle we have, if we were to count the scutes on the back, on his back, we would find out he is an Olive Ridley sea turtle. And he's actually one of two sea turtles that uh, we have on exhibit here at the aquarium. So here we have another great picture. This is a picture we saw earlier of another sea turtle. You can see that beautiful shell. And then, of course, they are reptiles. Sea turtles. Oh, there he is right there. Our two sea turtles are named Theo and Lou. 
I'm back here. I can't actually tell which one it is, but it's going to be either Theo or Lou. You can see uh, the turtle is up at the surface, taking us uh, and then going back down. Let's watch. Once again, as scientists, it's important to be able to notice what things are doing and watch what's happening. So the sea turtle swam back down. I wonder if he's going to go back into his cave at some point today. He likes to hide in that cave. It's a nice relaxing place uh, for him to spend his day. All right, so that was the number one. Hmm. All right, now scientists, let's get ready to look at the next number we've got going on here. Take a look at another image right here. I'm gonna have James change our picture. Hmm, what do you notice here? <gasps> Shout it out if you can count. One, two, puffins. If you shout it out too, that is right. I noticed here, there are two puffins here. These are horned puffins. We happen to have puffins on exhibit here at the aquarium. Uh, and these, I really love puffins. You know, they look kind of like penguins, but they're a little bit different. Now, puffins live up north where it's cold. Um, instead of down south where it's cold, where penguins live. And horn puffins have that beautiful beak. What colors do you notice on their beaks? You said red, maybe kind of orange. And what's the last color? Yellow? Good observation, scientists. These puffins have very colorful beaks and they use these beaks to grab fish. And you know what's really neat? Their beaks can hold more than one fish. Their beaks can hold maybe sometimes five or ten fish. Can you imagine if you could hold five or ten fish in your mouth? That would be amazing. So we have some of these puffins that live here at the aquarium, and uh, they're really, really amazing animals. What else do you notice about our puffins here? What colors do you see? We said we noticed the beak that had red, orange, and yellow. Do you notice any other colors? I noticed that too. They're black on the top and white on the bottoms, like near their bellies. That is uh, actually a lot of animals are colored like that, black on the top and white on the bottom, or dark on the top and light on the bottom. Great observations today. Our puffins are actually excellent uh, diving birds, and they uh, kick around with their feet, and they can fly underwater. They can actually fly short distances above land as well. So. Here, have a look. This is a different type of puffin, and you can see this is the tufted puffin. Uh, these two tufted puffins right here, you notice the orange and yellow there. Uh, oh, look at it! Sort of diving uh, just below the surface. You can see one of them kicking their feet over. Did you notice that? Oops, sorry, I'm not following it very well. There we go. There's the puffin right there. These are some other animals that live on exhibit with them. You can see these are pigeon guillemots. So they're also kind of dark colored. Oh, but they have those beautiful feet there. What color feet do you notice? Shout it out. Orange, you're right. Good observations today, scientists. All right, excellent. I wanna just take a quick pause because um, Jackson asked an excellent question about the sea turtle that we just looked at. Um, Jackson and Eric, I'm sorry. Jackson and Eric wanted to know why sea turtles go to the surface. That's a great question. Sea turtles go to the surface because just like birds, um, sea turtles breathe air. And so they go to the surface to uh, take a deep breath and then they'll hold their breath and go back down into the water. Because that turns out they live a lot in the underwater. They just, they breathe air. So they go up there for that. All right, great questions so far today. So, so far we've got one sea turtle. We had two puffins. Let's take a look at the next picture and see what we can see here. All right, scientists, take a look. And how many fish do you see in this picture? If you know, shout it out. One, two, three. If you notice three fish, that's right. This is the number three. Go ahead and see if you can draw it in the air. Trace it if you want. Right here, the number three. I noticed three clownfish too. So what colors do you notice on the clownfish here? They are, shout it out, orange, white, and black. 
great observations today. Now the clownfish lives inside and among all these tentacles right here. And this is an anemone. An anemone provides nice protection for a clownfish. This is also a clownfish right here, just different colors. And uh, the anemone protects the clownfish and the clownfish protects the anemone. So they live and they're like a team. They have teamwork to, um, to live together. So why don't we go ahead and take a moment right now. Why don't you pretend you're an anemone with a clownfish living in you? Go ahead and wave your tentacles. You're living in the ocean, wave your tentacles. And this is how anemones catch their food. They sting their food and then they grab it and pump it in their mouth. And that is how an anemone eats. You want to pretend to do that too? All right, anemones wave. Protect those clownfish you've got with you. Catch your food and then pop it in your mouth. Excellent job today, clownfish scientists. All right, so uh, great observations so far. Let's look at the next number on deck here and see what you notice. Hmm, I see a jelly, but take a look at the one jelly. Do you notice that there's a pattern on this jelly? Hmm, that pattern, are there stomachs? Take a closer look when the jelly turns. How many stomachs does this jelly have? <gasps> let's, I see one jelly right here, but let's look at their stomachs. Now the stomach is the thing that's U-shaped. Let's count them together, scientists. What do you notice? One, two, three, four, whoops, sorry, four stomachs. <gasps> the moon jelly has four stomachs. Can you imagine what it would be like if you had four stomachs? I would love to have four stomachs. In my first stomach, I would put pizza. In my second stomach, I would put peanut butter and jelly sandwich. In my third stomach, I would put strawberries. In my fourth stomach, I would probably put ice cream. But jellies in particular, they eat plankton. They eat tiny things that drift in the ocean. So what a jelly does is it has all these stingers all the way around it. And as it runs into its food, it stings its food and it then sweeps up the food and puts it inside of one of four stomachs. So this is a live look inside of our jelly cam here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. So take a look and see if you notice the stomachs on these moon jellies. Can you count all their stomachs? They should have four. The lighting is really bright right now, but you're, you can definitely tune in whenever. Does everybody see all the little speckles you see right here? We've just fed them recently. So uh, the little speckles that, they, that are in here are baby brine shrimp, teeny tiny plankton that we've put in there. So the jellies swim through their food and they sting their food and then they um, sweep it into one of their four stomachs. Do you wanna pretend to be a jelly right now? Let's try it. Everybody show me your big jelly L. Now jellies, they move by going bloop, bloop. Bloop. Now, you can make the noise, okay? So bloop, 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 bloop. Great job, jelly scientists. Oh, look right there. Oh, really close. Look at one, two, three, four stomachs. It was so close. It got really, really blurry there. Oh, amazing. So that is the number four. A jelly, like the moon jelly, has four stomachs. Wow. I didn't know that. We learned that today. Great job today. All right, let's take a look at the next picture here and see if what we can see here. Now, there happen to be a lot of sea stars here. Let's count the arms of a sea star. Hmm. Take a look at one of these pink or orange sea stars. How many arms do they have? Are you counting them? Okay, shout it out. Ready? Sea stars have five arms. You're right. If you said five, that is correct. So let's take a look at a sea star. I'm going to hold up a sea star model that I've got here. Oh, a great picture right here. Let's count them together. Ready? One, two, three, <laughs> sorry, four, five. I counted them out of order. It's five arms right here. But this looks different than the other picture we saw. The other picture we saw kind of looked like this. What's the difference? Hmm. 
Can anybody guess? Maybe this is a different view of the sea star. You're right. This is the underside of the sea star. What do you notice, though? Hmm. I noticed that, too. There's all these little circles. These circles are tube feet, and that's how sea stars stick to things. So they're able to stick on. Now, this picture that I have behind me is actually a view of a sea star stuck to one of the windows here at the aquarium. And we're able to see how they are able to suction on to uh, uh, the glass here or maybe to a rock. And that's because sea stars sometimes live in really rocky environments. Now, one thing I like to do is sometimes I like to pretend I'm a sea star because it happens, uh, just so happens that we have um, five pretend sea star arms too. You ever had one, two, three, you have one, uh, one leg and the other leg right there. You can't see mine right now. But sometimes when I pretend to be a sea star, I will bask in the ocean like this. I say sea star and then I put my arms and my legs out and my head up high. Do you guys pretend to be a sea star today? Let's try it, all right? On the count of five, I'll count them quickly, and then I want you to go, sea star, and yell really loud, okay? Hopefully that's not gonna bother mom or dad that are working in the background, maybe. All right, one, two, three, four, five, sea star! All right, great job, everybody. Okay, scientists, let's see if we notice what's on the next picture here. Take a look. Happen to have this animal right here. Do we have a picture with multiple of these? Mixing it up just a little bit. So we're going to keep an eye out for an animal like this. Does anybody know what kind of animal this is? If you said an eel, that's correct. This is a garden eel. So let's take a look right here and count them. How many garden eels do you see? One, two, three, four, five, six. <gasps> Shout it out, six garden eels. All right, so we have six garden eels in this picture. I'll move out of the way so you can see them just a little bit better. There we go, we have six garden eels and you can see it almost looks like it's snowing there. And that's because they eat plankton also. So we have fed them and then uh, they reach up and they grab their food. So there are six garden eels uh, in this view right here, number six. Now each one of those garden eels though has, what do you notice scientists? Dark spots, they have one, two eye spots that we can see in this picture. You can see it in this picture too. This one has one, two <laughs> eye spots there. Um, and those aren't actually their eyes, but they're made to look like eyes. Uh, and so it confuses maybe predators or bigger animals that are swimming around. And then uh, maybe an animal that would normally eat something like a garden eel or another fish um, would see it and say, oh, those look like really big eyes looking back at me. I'll skip that creature and maybe look for something else. So the eye spots are really important way that um, these animals can sort of uh, confuse other animals out there. Now I've gotten a couple of, uh, couple of great questions so I'm going to take a break from the, the observations we've done so far. Great job scientists. Um, we're going to take a couple of quick questions. Um, first uh, we have one question. What do jellies eat? Our jellies here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we feed them baby brine shrimp. But just in general, they eat plankton. Um, so sometimes they eat tiny, tiny plankton. Sometimes they eat um, bigger plankton. There are some jellies that even eat other jellies, um, but they just have to be able to drift and run into them. Um, Adrian also wanted to know how many stingers do jellies have? And it really depends on the type of jelly, but it's thousands and thousands. So each of the tentacles that they have, let me see if I have, I thought I had a, a plush stuffed animal. I don't see it right now, but um, each of the tentacles they have, oh, thanks, James. Um, each one of these tentacles is lined with thousands and thousands of stinging cells. And so uh, how many stingers do they have? Thousands of them. Um, but as soon as they use them, they have to regrow it. So it's actually important for them 
um, to be able to rest in between those stinging times um, and regrow all those stingers. So they have lots and lots of stingers. What sea stars eat? And it depends on the type of sea star. So uh, the sea stars that we have, which are uh, like bat stars or uh, ochre stars, uh, they'll eat pretty much anything that they can find. Um, a lot of times they'll eat things like mussels, not this kind of mussel, but like the mussels, like the, um, the ones with the black shells. So they'll eat like clams and mussels and things like that. Um, we feed them things like shrimp and um, little pieces of clam with no shell, uh, and, and maybe even sometimes little pieces of fish and things like that. Um, but that's what our sea stars here happen to eat. And it's pretty cool. Their mouth is actually also on the bottom. So um, when you look at a sea star, this is a model of a sea star. This is normally what we see. The bottom of them have those two feet, those little circle suckers that make them stick to things. Um, they also have a mouth in the middle and sea stars will uh, stick their stomach out through their mouth, out through their body, wrap their stomach around their food and then digest it so it's nice and soft and then bring it back inside. So they eat on the outside of their body. Can you imagine eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on the outside of your body? It's pretty amazing that the sea stars can do that. All right, great questions. We're going to go back to our observations, though, because uh, we just have a few more pictures to show you. So take a look at this next image here. <gasps> what do you see? A shark! Now let's take a look at how many fins does a shark have? Now everybody knows there's the famous one, right? Go ahead and show me your shark fins, everybody. Yeah, right there, the, the fin on the top. There's actually two fins on the top, aren't there? Take a look at the shark right here. Now, um, scientists go ahead and count all of the fins, those triangle shapes, do all of the fins that you see right here. And tell me how many that you see. Hmm, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fins here. And then they have a tail fin, so that's their eighth fin. But this picture shows you seven of their fins. What do you think sharks use their fins for? Hmm. Well, some people might say maybe it tells us it's coming closer to us. That's true. That's not actually the reason why they use their, why they have their fins though. Let's take a look at a shark swimming right here. Yeah, so the shark is using its big old tail fin to swim and all the other fins help it steer, kind of like an airplane would use uh, wings. So we don't see sharks flutter their fins like this. They, they use them to steer by leaning and every single fin helps to make their swimming a little bit better. So take a look once again as we, oh, the shark swam away. Oh, there it is in the back. Watch it swim towards us. Oh, there's the turtle again. Yeah, so those sharks don't really move the fins a whole lot other than the tail fin, but they use all those side fins, the seven side fins that they've got to help make their swimming even better. All right. So great job. We are talking about the number seven. Let's take a look at the next picture though. Right here, what do you notice? <gasps> How many arms does an octopus have? Hmm. <gasps> Shout it out everybody. They've got eight arms, eight arms on the octopus, right? Let's take a look at an octopus I've got right here. Now I have a stuffed animal octopus here. Let's count the arms, everybody. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight arms on this octopus. What do you think they use their arms for? Have you ever seen? Yeah, they use their arms for lots of different things. So sometimes they can use all these arms right here to stick to things. Do you see all those suction cups there? On the very biggest octopuses, they can have hundreds and hundreds of suction cups per arm, and they can use that to grab. The other thing that's amazing is that while they're touching, they taste with their suction cups. Did you know that? Now, what do you use to taste your food? Oh, you're right. You use your mouth. 
And actually, you use your tongue to taste most things. Right there. But the octopus uses their suction cups. So they're able to touch and taste at the same time. Can you imagine what would it be like if you could touch and taste at the same time? Show me your fingers. What if you reached down next to you and touched either if you're sitting on the couch, you touch the couch. If you're sitting near or on the floor, touch the floor. What if you could taste the floor or the couch right now? Does it taste good? Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. So eight arms is what the octopus has, and that's actually why it's called octo. Octo means eight. So octopuses have eight arms, just like an octagon has eight sides. So great observations so far, everybody. What do you see here, scientists? I see a teeny tiny octopus. This is a baby octopus. This is a baby two-spot octopus. So it's got eight arms and it actually has two little eye spots on it. So that's not its actual eye. That's just a, a pattern that it has on its side. That is a baby two-spot octopus. All right. So let's take a look now um, over here. I want to show you something over on my side camera here. And I want you to count what you see. Come on over. Come on over. to turn the light on here so just give me one second I'm gonna show you something really cool on my side camera here let's count the number of shells we've got one okay I'm gonna keep putting them out count them out loud two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Look right there. I'm showing you my shell collection. And I happen to have nine shells in my shell collection. Do some of them look similar? Do some of them look different? Yeah, we've got all different kinds of shells here in my shell collection. I'm gonna change the lighting just a little bit so you can see the colors a little better. That's really neat. Now the animals that live inside of those shells are snails. And the cool thing about snails is they make their own shells. And they, uh, as they grow bigger and bigger and bigger, they add to the very front of their shell, that like near the door where they, they pop their uh, slimy heads out of. That's where they build their own shell. It's a really cool thing about snails. So um, if you can go ahead, count them one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine shells. I've got nine shells in my shell collection. Excellent. All right. I have one more thing to show you today. Um, let's go ahead and see if there's a picture that I can show you. And we will see <gasps> how many legs does this crab have? <gasps> Whoa, so many legs. Go ahead and take a moment right now to count them, scientists. And then when you're ready, shout it out. Let's see. <gasps> and maybe I can show you with a toy crab here. Let me grab one right now. Okay, I found one. Let's count the number of legs that this crab has, including the big old pinching claws. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Did you know that crabs have ten legs? They do. Even this giant spider crab has 10 legs. Now, this spider crab has long, skinny pincher arms. And this crab, this stuffed uh, toy crab, has the fat, strong claws right there. So different crabs have different kinds of claws. Can you show me your crab claws? Are they pinchy? How many of them do you have? Two, right?
right. Now take a look at this crab. This crab's got 10 arms, uh, legs right there, including two big claws. But you can see they've got all those other little parts. The, the little things you see moving right there, those are the, their mouth parts. So crabs are a type of crustacean. We've also got this crab. This is, um, this is like a, a swimming crab that you can see out there in the ocean. And they also have 10 total uh, legs on them. It's pretty amazing. All right, well, great job with all those observations today, scientists. We did a whole bunch of, bunch of counting. We saw all the numbers from one to 10 today. Now your challenge today is while you're uh, walking around, maybe in your yard or maybe inside your room, you can count all the different things you've seen today. All right, great job, scientists. We're looking forward to seeing you later today on the rest of the Aquarium's online academy. Have a wonderful day. Bye.